Folks, WWDC is just around the corner. This being a developer channel, let's talk about tech. Now, as usual, Apple will have some operating system updates that we can be sure of, but there are also some leaks of what might be upcoming in the event. Let's take a look at some of the predictions. And I'm going to focus heavily on the hardware here because I know that's what you and I really care about. And also, I really can't believe I have to say this, but no, I don't work for Apple and they don't pay me. Unlike what some folks in the comments seem to believe, I just like their hardware a lot and I think it's going to do wonders for the developer ecosystem. All right, let's do this. All right, little M1s had a nice run, didn't they? And while they're still capable little machines, they are babies compared to the Mama and the Papa Mac machines that we're going to witness in the next few months. According to a Bloomberg article and a pretty reliable leak source that was published last month, Apple will launch two redesigned MacBook Pros, a 14-inch and a 16-inch MacBook Pros. They'll have a redesigned chassis, no touch bar, thankfully, and they'll have more ports, including a dedicated HDMI port, a MagSafe charger, and an SD card slot. Really? And the really cool thing is it's gonna have four Thunderbolt ports, which can all be used at the same time. Oh my. Other than the new redesign, what's under the hood? The MacBooks are rumored to be powered by a successor of the M1 silicon chip. We don't know the name yet. It could be M2 or M1X. They have code names, Jade C-Chop and Jade C-Die. Don't know what that means. But both chips will include eight high performance cores, eight and two energy efficient cores, making a total of 10 cores, at least 10 cores. That's what they say. Now, the difference in the models will be the number of graphical cores. The lower end chip will have 16 cores, while the higher end one will have 32 cores. In comparison, last year's M1 MacBook Pro has four performance cores and four energy efficient cores and eight graphic cores, only eight. And the new chips will have an improved neural engine which processes machine learning tasks. The new MacBook Pros will offer up to 64 gigabytes of memory compared to the 16 gigabytes of the current MacBook Pro. But these new 64 gigabyte beasts that we'll see are not like the 64 gigabyte by machines of last year's Intel MacBook Pros. Oh no. These will use the unified memory, as I've mentioned before on this channel, and that means the CPU and GPU will use the same memory at the same time. This streamlines efficiency and is one of the reasons we see incredible speeds even from the little baby M1s you've seen me test here. It's also rumored that the new MacBooks will have a mini LED display, but it seems like that may be delayed until next year. Developers, don't waste time. Hop on these new specs right away, as there's now going to be new opportunity to expand your software to utilize this kind of power we haven't seen before. I'm really excited about these new machines. Since the baby M1s have been already delivering some knockout punches to Intel and AMD machines here in most of my tests, mommy and daddy M2s will absolutely destroy them and I can't wait to test it here. Consider subscribing to my channel so you don't miss those. It's also rumored that there could be a redesigned Mac Mini, redesigned with a thinner body and plexiglass-like reflective surface and powered by the next iteration of the M1 chip, maybe the same M1X or M2, who knows? Port-wise, it'll be equipped with four USB 4 Thunderbolt 3 Type-C ports, two USB-A ports, Ethernet, full-size HDMI, and a magnetic power connector. That's pretty interesting on a Mac Mini. It's possible that the new Mac Minis will be launched at WWDC next week. Oh yeah. But with the current state of semiconductor shortages, its launch might be delayed a year. Now, I personally think that this is just a rumor. The the current iteration of M1 Mac Minis is pretty powerful and it packs a heck of a lot of a punch for that package and for the price. So I think Apple might hold off on that one till next year. There's also a lot of excitement around the iPad OS update, especially when it comes to the iPad Pro, which now has the M1 chip. The iPad Pro has a pretty weird standing in the Apple ecosystem. At this point, now it's not really a tablet or a laptop, but it's also a tablet and a laptop. <laughs> because now with the iPad Pro having the M1 chip, it's way too powerful for a normal tablet. We've never seen anything like it, but it's not really good enough quite yet to replace your laptop, especially for us developers. There's just not any software, no good IDEs that I know of to use the iPad Pro as a development machine. I'd like to see some of those coming out in the next year. But hardware-wise, the iPad Pro is... A beast. Even with the previous Bionic chips, the iPad Pro had the hardware to outperform Intel i7 chips. The problem with the iPad is not the hardware, but it's software. We need more software for developers on the iPad Pro. Whoever's listening, Apple, 
you probably don't watch my videos but come on let's do it folks let's get some ides for developers on the ipad pros which are beautiful little machines they just need to have stuff for us developers but ipad os is still great at the usual stuff web browsing email social media browsing photo editing that's what i use it for and watching videos and there are also some limitations on the iPad OS. It's rumored that uh, it can only support software up to five gigabytes of RAM. And all this might change with the next update to iPad OS. We'll see what gets announced. Now, I think that Apple is really getting geared to push iPad out there as the next laptop. When that'll happen, we don't know. But this is also one of those things that's pretty exciting for me to see at WWDC. We'll see. All right, this video wouldn't be complete if I didn't say something about iOS 15. After all, I do mobile development myself, and a lot of you folks out there are also mobile developers. The new update to iOS and iPadOS will apparently change how notifications and privacy are handled. Users will be able to set different notification preferences, like if the phone should make a sound, vibrate, or silent, depending on the current status, like whether you're driving or working or sleeping, or even custom categories. And users will be able to set this via a menu on the lock screen, in the control center and the menu used for quickly accessing settings. You might also be able to set automatic replies, a feature that I really wanted for a long time, depending what status you're in. Now, currently there is an auto reply feature available when driving and you also get a do not disturb feature and sleep mode. But with a new update, there will be a system-wide feature for changing notifications according to your status. Now, as far as privacy, there might be a change coming to that too. One rumored feature is a new menu that'll show you apps that are collecting data on your device. Hmm, let's see, is Facebook? Book do, uh, I don't know. Uh, there could be a new food tracking feature as well in Health App. Last year's Big Sur update was a major one, breaking away from OS X and switching over to Apple Silicon. There haven't been many rumors around Mac OS 12, other than it'll have minor updates. Now, conspiracy theories continue, especially if you've been reading comments on this channel, with lots of folks thinking that Intel Macs have been slowed down by Apple with last year's Big Sur release. And those same folks are probably gonna have more conspiracy theories this year, I'm sure. By the way, what do you think will be the new OS name? Let's see, uh, beautiful beautiful California locations. Napa? Death Valley? Okay, not that one. <laughs> Let me know in the comments what you think. Now, as far as watch OS, there haven't really been any leaks regarding watch OS 8 other than the usual watch faces. So we don't really know what to expect. Something that we can expect is a future update to watch OS that might bring assistive touch to Apple Watch. This is an accessibility feature that'll be pretty handy and allow users to control the Apple Watch without touching the display. So it might use motion sensors like the gyroscope and accelerometer along with optical heart rate sensor and on-device machine learning to detect subtle differences in muscle movements and tendon activity, which will enable users to move a cursor on the display through a series of hand gestures like a pinch or a clench. That's pretty cool. Although I don't know if it's going to work very well, maybe by version 10. It's rumored that tvOS 15 will come with new UI design, but who cares about that? I already like my TV. It works well. Thanks, Apple. All right, folks, if you like this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. It really helps others find it and it helps the YouTube algorithm get my video discovered by new audiences. And if you want to see updates, especially with the new hardware, I'm planning to get the new machines as soon as I can get my hands on them. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of those videos. And thanks for watching. Enjoy WWDC and I'll see you next time.